Second one, the name. This one, Michaela, negative nine minus five. Oh, negative one. That one's negative. All right, number two. Um, also, Michaela, uh, smile quick. Plus two for all of them, please. KD, Zoe, uh, Kayla, Khalil. Um, what type of problem is number two? Again, like to make sure we know what type of problem it is. So we don't know what shadow would be. Raise your hand up. You guys and what kind of scientific notation? Like what operation are we using? Division. Good. And how do you know that? Because they wanted to know how many times the aluminum is a battery, how many times the aluminum is a battery. Good. So what do we divide? Um, six times ten divided by two times ten divided by three. And the six times ten is one represents what? The aluminum or gold? Good. We want to do the aluminum divided by gold because they tell us, they're asking us how many times more aluminum there is. So it's aluminum divided by gold. So like that, so six times 10 to the first divided by two times 10 to the negative one. All right, somebody else pick up from here. What's my next set now, Janae? Um, three times 10. Then we're going to do, we're going to subtract the exponent. Good. So one minus negative one is two. Nice job. Uh, same for Janae. We want to make sure we don't forget that, right? When the, when the, the exponent in the denominator is negative, we got to remember that it's still, you know, one minus negative and not just one minus one. So that becomes what, Janae? Three times 10 to the? Second. Okay. And what's that equal though in standard form? 300. Okay, so 300 times more aluminum. Um, all right, for number three, what do we? What type of problem is this? Even though it's it's on a graph, it's a, on a coordinate plane. What type of problem is that? Like Pythagorean theorem. How do we use Pythagorean theorem to find and solve like a size st? Come on. Sorry, Lula. All right, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, what's my a going to be? Six. Where'd you get that? Okay. Mm -hmm. That there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the y, uh, the y axis. And our, our b is what? Eight. Okay. So I got six squared plus eight squared equals c squared. Go ahead, Mike. What's the next step? Oh, come on, the best mistake. Wait, if she said 12, right hand, what's the mistake she probably made? Khalil? Six times two. Remember, what is it, Mike? 36, right. Plus 64. Okay, equals C squared. Uh, right, Zoe, what's the next, next one? One, what? 100 equals C squared. So C is. Good, because it's the square root of 100. All right, uh, for this last one, it asks us to find angle X, but I want to see right, it. Right. So if X, we said, is 139, what would this one be? Um, Kimari, what would this angle be? Huh? Not 41. This one would be 41. What would this one be? Michael? 139. Why? Because it's vertical with X. Because it's vertical with X, perfect. So what are these last two going to be? 41. 41, also. Good. 
All right, go ahead and flip the page. Um, so for our warm up, we are matching, uh, matching equivalent expressions. So you're going to have to do something for each of the six expressions on the left side to see which of these four, A, B, C, or D, they are equivalent to. Watch this still. For each of these, think of our, our still our thinking job. So like, uh, my first thinking job, clear when I see this, is to, to think what? Why? That parentheses, right? So go through each of these problems, see if you can match them to A, B, C, or D, and use the space down here as your workspace. So for like number one, I'm gonna set up my work right here, five times three X minus eight, and I'm gonna see what I get. And then right here, I'm just putting A, B, C, or D. Uh, let's say you have two minutes to try that and then two minutes to check in and see if you're ready to go over it. If we have enough time or if we need more time, let's go. Thirty seconds. We need like just about a show of fingers. Is that gonna be enough time? We need another minute, two minutes. Thirty more seconds. If, if we're done. Thirty more seconds is good. Process. We have about 20 more seconds and then we're going to bring it back. Sean came in. So if you put the, uh, just the letter 2 instead of the expression, it's easier for me to check real quick. Can't think of think of jobs. Was my first my first job though. Okay, so now my next line is going to be what? Three plus three x plus three x and three plus three x plus forty. 
Word problems, you need to create your own equation to be able to solve it. So how did you come up with that? Okay, so I got three and because they said it was multiplying the number by three. Okay, multiply by three, that's not a three and good. And then the plus ten. Minus then subtracted the their number. So the minus ten. Awesome. So the subtracted minus number is the minus ten. Beautiful. So the left side that's where we've got three n plus ten minus n. How about the right? And then they said she got 12 more than twice her number. So I did 12 plus 2n. 12 more than 12 plus twice my number is the 2n. Beautiful. All right, now uh, let's go ahead and try to solve it. Um, let me hear from somebody else, though. What's our first thinking job when we are solving equations? Smile. Mike, the first thing a job? Are they parentheses? Are they parentheses here? No. No. Second thing a job? Are they light terms? Are they light terms on each side? So if I look on the left, do I have light terms? What are they? Hold on, one voice at a time, sorry. 3n, and yes, it is negative 10. So when we combine 3n and negative 10, uh, Sorry, negative 10. Negative n, Amar, what's 3n and negative n when we combine? 2n. 2n, and then we keep the plus 10, so my next line is going to be 2n plus 10 equals anything to combine on the right? Nope. Nope, so I'm just bringing down my 2n plus 12. All right, what will be our next step? Are there and I think it does. So, go ahead, Mike. Are there variables on each side? Are there? Okay, so what do we have to do? Use inverse operations. Use operations to get rid of one of them. But one glue, should we get rid of? Huh? Oh, you want to get rid of a constant? Because Micah said get rid of variables on both sides. Well, let's see what happens when we. Let's see also what happens like when we do both. Um, let's. It's not going to be that. Let's, so let's see what happens with both ways, right? We could, because we know there's lots of different ways to solve an equation. Okay, do you agree with me? So if we take away 2n on both sides, what are we left with? 10. Yeah, so on the left we have 10, and on the right we have 12. But does 10 equal 12? No. No. So what could that possibly mean about... Yeah, right? That means that if we end up with two things that are not equal, this is what's called a no-solution equation. That means that there is no number, no number exists that could make this equation. Now we're going to uh, make ourselves an anchor chart to just have something like, you know, the anchor chart they have around the room. They can always look back to to just remind yourself of what are the different things we need, okay? Uh, Samaya, can you, as we make this anchor chart right here, can you write what I'm writing? Um, we're gonna use different colors also to make it nice and pretty and organized. All right, our, so we're gonna look at three different equations. We're gonna put those equations in the middle column. On the left, we're gonna decide what solution type they are, either infinite solutions, no solution, or one solution. And on the right, we're gonna describe it so that we know when we see this equation, we know what we're looking at. So our first equation is you can write this in the middle box on yours. I already have it up there for you tonight. It's negative 4L plus 
5 equals 5 minus 4x. Alright, go ahead and write that equation. Now, when we go to start solving, what do we notice about that equation? Oh my god, what's the last shot? This is what is. What do we notice when we go to start solving this equation? Negative 4x plus 5 equals 5 minus 4x. Think about if we were solving the equation, our thinking jobs, what would we do first? Uh, Kaden? Okay. Start a little out. With parentheses, with no parentheses, then what? Okay, are there any like terms on both sides? No, then what? Variables on both sides, okay. Do we have variables on both sides? What do we gotta do then? Uh, we'll use inverse operations. So if this is negative 4x, what do I need to do? I need to add 4x. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So when we add 4x to both sides, what do we have left? Uh, baby, go ahead. Yeah, 5 equals 5. So based on what we've learned so far, what solution type is that? Janae? Yeah, that's infinite. And we can write it also as uh, infinitely. Oh man, I'm spelling it wrong, right? Yep, spelled it wrong. Infinitely many solutions. Now that could be called different things. You might see, it might just say infinite solutions. You might see it as more than one solution, right? But anything that's more than one solution is going to be infinitely many solutions. So as we look at now the structure of the, this infinitely, infinite solution. As we look at the structure of the equation, right? What we have left is our solution. What do we notice about it? And I want you to think about some of our other vocab terms like coefficients and constants. So as we look at this original equation, what do you notice about the format of it, especially thinking about coefficients and constants? Disney? I noticed that you would turn, when you turn everything to a negative, so then 5 minus 4x is right. You turn negative 